Hello everyone, welcome to the next section of the course, talking HTTP in the internet. In this section we'll look at how Rust makes writing fast HTTP servers easier. We'll also look at writing clients to communicate with these servers over a network. Now we move on to the first video of this section, that is Hyper. Hyper is arguably the most stable and well known of Rust based HTTP frameworks. It has two distinct components, one for writing HTTP servers and one for writing clients. Recently, the server component was moved to a new async programming model based on Tokyo and Futures. As a result, it's well suited for high traffic workloads. However, like a lot of other libraries in the ecosystem, Hyper has not hit version 1.0 yet, so one should expect breaking API changes. We'll start with writing a small HTTP server in Hyper. For that, first we'll move into the directory, and like always, we'll set up our project using Cargo. As you can see, we've successfully created Hyper Server Project. Let's now add dependencies that will include Hyper and Futures. First, we'll enter into the Hyper Future file and open cargo.toml file in the nano editor. After adding the dependencies, the cargo.toml file will look like this. Before closing, save the file. Next, we'll move into the SRC folder and open the main.rs file. Here, we'll replace the existing code with these lines of code. Our main file is pretty simple. In the real world, HTTP servers will often talk to a backend, and all that can take a while to complete. Thus, it's common for replies to be a bit delayed. We'll simulate that using a function that sleeps for 200 milliseconds each time it's called, and then returns a fixed string. As Hyper heavily relies on Tokyo to do asynchronous handling of requests, an HTTP server in Hyper needs to implement a built-in trait called service from Tokyo. This is essentially a function that maps a request to a response via an implementation of the call method. This method returns the result as a future, indicating eventual completion of the given task. In that implementation, we'll match the method and path of the incoming request. If the method is get and the path is data, we call heavy underscore work and get the result. We then compose a response by setting the content length header to the size of the string we're returning and the body of the response. In our main function, we'll construct our server by binding it to a known port. In our case, we're using 8080 port. At the end, we'll call run on it to start the server. After that, we'll come out of the SRC folder and execute cargo run command to compile the program. To interact with the server, we'll open a new terminal and execute curl command. Let's benchmark our server. For this, we'll install Apache Bench from this official website. In the terminal, we'll run 1,000 total requests from 100 clients in parallel by passing some command line parameters to Apache Bench. This will take a while to complete, and we're waiting 200 milliseconds before returning each response. So, we'll execute this command to initiate the benchmarking process. It will take some time, so be patient. In our case, we're benchmarking for 1,000 requests, so we'll wait for at least 200 seconds. On one run, the output will look like this. As you can observe, across all requests, the server is taking around 104.050 millisecond to reply back. This matches our expectation of 100 millisecond, with the extra time being spent on other things. Also, our server is processing 9.61 requests per second, which is way too low for a reasonable server. This is all because our server is single-threaded, and only one thread serves all clients. This server also ignores the fact that multiple CPU cores are available on the host. Once it's done, we'll go back to the Section 6 directory. Let's go ahead and write a server that largely does the same thing, the difference being that this one uses multi-threaded heavily, and uses all CPU cores. Here we'll create a new project. Cargo setup for Hyper Server Faster will look as shown here. To add some more crates as dependencies, we'll first open cargo.toml file in the nano editor and add these dependencies in the file. As you can see, we have a number of extra things here. Tokyo Core will be used to run an event loop, as we did in Mayo in section 3, TCP and UDP using Rust. Net2 will be used for some advanced socket configuration and numCPUs will be used to figure out the number of CPU cores on the machine. Saving this file, we'll be moving on to the main file. From SRC folder of Hyper Server Faster, 
will open main.rs file in nano editor. Here we'll replace the existing code with this block of code. After adding the big chunk of code, we'll align it to make it more presentable. Having set those up, our main file is pretty simple. Functionally, this server is exactly the same as the last one. Architecturally, they're very different. Our implementation of service is the same. What changed majorly is that we split starting the server on two functions. The serve function creates a new event loop and a handle to it will create our listener using net2 so that we can set a bunch of options on it using the TCP builder pattern. Specifically, we set so reuse port on the socket so that under high loads, the OS can distribute connections to all threads fairly. We also set a backlog of 128 for the listening socket. We then loop over incoming connections on the listener and for each, we run our service implementation. Our start underscore server method takes in an integer that corresponds to the number of calls on the host and address as a string. We then start a loop and run the serve method in new threads. In this case, our HTTP instance will be passed to multiple threads. Thus, we need to wrap it in an automatically referencing counting. That is ARC pointer, because that guarantees thread safety of the underlying type. Finally, we'll call start server in our main function using get method from numCPU's package to get the number of cores on the machine. In the main function, we'll update the IP address and change the local host as 8080. Save this file and exit from the file. To compile the program, we'll execute cargo run command. It may take some time, so we'll wait patiently. Once it's done, we'll switch to the new terminal. Here, we'll execute a command to initiate the process of benchmarking. It will be done in the same way as last time and shows these results at the end. This server's throughput is around double the last one, primarily because it uses threading better. Requests still take over 200 milliseconds to process, as expected. Note the actual time taken by this will depend on the hardware and conditions of the machine running this. That's all about hyper, future, and benchmarking. 